Get Rich Education is brought to you by Nurata Real Estate Corporate Direct and Ridge Lending Group. Cashflow Real Estate Investors, this is Get Rich Education's Keith Weinhold. Did you know that you can finance up to 35 income properties all with one lender? Ridge Lending Group specializes in investment property loans, and they do it in almost every U.S. state. Ridge has worked with tens of thousands of real estate investors and homeowners all over the country. They've been doing this for investors for so long that at this point, they've helped more families realize their dreams of becoming real estate investors than any other mortgage lender in the country. To find out more, visit RidgeLendingGroup.com. Welcome to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold, giving you information and ideas on the investment that has turned more ordinary people into millionaires and billionaires than anything else, and can provide you with more wealth and happiness than you ever thought possible. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, and educator, Keith Weinhold. Hey, welcome to GRE. This is Get Rich Education, episode 107. I'm your host, Keith Weinhold, heard in 171 world nations from Australia to Armenia to Argentina to America. Thanks for being here. And hey, I've got to use that geography degree of mine once in a while. I'm back to help you build your wealth and create financial freedom for yourself by creating durable income streams. Today, we're talking with Rich Dad Advisor Garrett Sutton about protecting what you've got. Your income streams are only durable to the extent that they're protected from predators and toxic people. Today, I am back in beautiful in pristine Anchorage, AK, USA, after bringing you last week's show from Ontario, Canada. Being a profitable investor often means not doing so much yourself. It's often about doing less and relying on the knowledge and the competency of your team so that you can focus on your best and highest use, which is often being the best investor that you can be. Now, your team, that's often going to include your property manager, your real estate agent, your insurance agent, your 1031 exchange intermediary your tax advisor, and among others, your chosen asset protection attorney. Now, sometimes the asset protection member of your team, you know, that seems kind of intimidating because you think that you have to know a bunch of legalese or spend mega bucks each year to retain an attorney. Well, smart GRE listeners like you have known for a while that you can have Garrett Sutton's company, Corporate Direct, as part of your team the same company that protected Robert Kiyosaki so well when he was famously sued years ago. And, you know, it just costs a fraction of what most people think in order to be protected at Corporate Direct. That's something accessible, approachable, available to you. Yes, your own asset protection team member can be the same as Rich Dad's. And you don't need to know everything. You can leave a lot of things to Corporate Direct. You don't need to know every nuance of tying the operating agreement between your state and a strong asset protection state. They do all that stuff. You don't need to remember all the corporate formalities so that your LLC is properly structured. They do a lot of that. We're going to talk about basically building firewalls between your assets, okay? Limiting the spread of a fire or an attack which therefore can limit your liability. And Garrett Sutton is terrific at making the complex simple. One way to reduce your risk that's so obvious that a lot of people just kind of don't even think about it this way, but that is just that you should be engaging in good business practices. I've long shared with you that my mission as a real estate investor is to provide housing to people that's clean, safe, affordable, and functional. Those four things. Never get called a slumlord, okay? Well, three of those four involve doing good business in the first place, clean, safe, and functional. If a tenant needs the railing fixed on their second-story balcony, I'm going to make sure that the property manager takes care of it. Good business practice, that reduces your liability right there, and it's doing the right thing anyway. But first, I recently wrote an article for the Rich Stand Advisors called 12 Reasons That It's a Great Time to Be a Real Estate Investor. 
we know that real estate prices are higher than they were five years ago, and that's one significant downside, okay? But we don't invest for appreciation anyway. So let's talk about 12 upsides for investing in real estate right now. Mortgage interest rates continue to flirt with historic lows. More millennials are entering prime renter age, okay, and they're the largest generation surpassing the baby boomers in 2015. Those are the first two. Thirdly, college costs continue to rise faster than inflation. Well, what does that mean? That means that millennials, this largest generation, they're saddled with more student loan debt. And without being able to form a housing down payment, a greater proportion must rent. And there's a psychological component as well. Okay, years ago, millennials, they saw their parents lose their home in the foreclosure crisis, the mortgage meltdown of 2009. Because this happened during those millennials' formative years, a lot of millennials just have a negative association with home ownership, and that drives rental demand. That's four. The fifth is that job growth has been tepid. And, you know, many of the jobs that have been added in those monthly employment reports, they're actually part-time jobs, and those tend to be lower paying. So this means that fewer would-be homeowners can form a down payment, and therefore that keeps them renting. Also, if you don't have a great job, then you're less likely to commit. You're less likely to stay put, which means you're less likely to buy and more likely to rent, and that way you retain the mobility for a better job opportunity. The seventh out of 12 is that, you know, all these trends, they resulted in the U.S. now having the lowest home ownership rate since 1965, over 50 years. Yeah, we've talked about that before. And economists and demographers, they expect that trend to continue So fewer people buying homes equates to more people in the renter pool driving rental demand. Rental occupancy is really high, so monthly rental amounts are rising even faster than inflation in a lot of these U.S. markets, and that just enriches us as real estate investors. Up to number nine here, just take a look at technology trends, okay? The sort of enhanced ability to work from home with conferencing software like Skype or workflow software like Slack, that makes going to the office less necessary. Increases in things like Amazon-like home shopping activity, that likewise just continues to eat away at retail space demand. And this means people can spend more time at home. All these trends mean people can spend more time at home, and that just drives residential demand. People want a sound place to live. You know, it's just such a general one that us as Americans, you know, we often overlook this. This is the 10th reason that it's a great time to be a real estate investor. The overall population of the U.S., it just continues to increase, and this drives the economics 101 of supply versus demand. And you might take this for granted, but population losses in places like Japan and Germany, they create excess housing capacity there. That's not happening here in the United States. With more economic uncertainty in places like China and Great Britain, more of those foreign buyers, they want to invest in the U.S. Maybe the U.S. economy isn't as rosy as a lot of people report, but some are looking at it as the least worst economy. And then the 12th and final one is Really, this maturity, I'll call it, this maturity of turnkey real estate investing, it makes it easier than ever for you to get started by controlling your own income property. And turnkey means that your property is rehabbed, it's tenanted, it's under management, and it's cash flowing from day one. So those are the 12 reasons it's a great time to be a real estate investor. Maybe you can think of some more, too. The trend is truly your friend, and you can read that and all of my blog articles at getricheducation.com slash blog. Well, speaking of turnkeys, we're actually going to have another turnkey provider on the show in two weeks, and we're going to be centered on Memphis, Tennessee then. Next week, we're going to discuss the pros and cons of renting the home that you live in yourself, your primary residence versus owning your home. It's going to be renting versus owning. We'll be right back with Garrett Sutton. This is Get Rich Education. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. 
Norado Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the U.S. Our simple, proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Get your free copy of the ultimate guide to passive real estate investing at noradarealestate.com slash guide. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com slash guide. You've worked hard to acquire real estate. Don't lose it in a blue instant. We live in a litigious society. Assets must be protected. Rich Dad advisor Garrett Sutton founded Corporate Direct to provide strong and effective asset protection for all investors in America. Corporate Direct offers personalized attention to your specific situation and is very affordable. Call 800-600-1760 and mention Get Rich Education for a $100 discount on all formations. Garrett Sutton wrote Loopholes of Real Estate, Start Your Own Corporation, and Toxic Client, among other bestsellers. He and his experienced team at Corporate Direct want you to be protected right now and with proper corporate maintenance into the future. Visit CorporateDirect.com today for a free incorporation kit or call 800-600-1760 for your Get Rich discount. That's CorporateDirect.com at 800-600-1760. Hi, this is Rich Dad Advisor Garrett Sutton. You're listening to the always valuable Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold. Don't quit your daydream. Today's guest is a corporate attorney, asset protection expert, and best-selling author who has sold more than 850,000 books to guide entrepreneurs and investors. Yes, 850,000. <laughs> For more than 25 years, he's run his practice assisting entrepreneurs and real estate investors through sound management and asset protection strategies. And you know, he just stays really current on this stuff. The companies he founded, Corporate Direct and Sutton Law Center, they've helped more than 10,000 clients now protect their assets and incorporate their businesses. He and I are both contributing writers at the Rich Dad Advisors blog. You can read our work at richdadadvisors.com. If that's not enough, I think you already know that he serves as a member of the elite group of Rich Dad Advisors for best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki. A number of the real estate and asset protection books that he's authored are quite well known and personally embraced. In fact, he wrote one of the best real estate investing books I've ever read called Loopholes of Real Estate, and he's written a number of books in the Rich Dad Poor Dad Wealth Building series. Welcome back to Get Rich Education for your first appearance since you were here on episode 15, Rich Dad Advisor, Garrett Sutton. Thank you, Keith. Pleasure to be with you and your listeners today. Well, asset protection, it's a more dynamic industry than some people think, Garrett. So let's talk a little bit first about just some of the everyday vocabulary of asset protection. What is a charging order? And talk about why a charging order is important for real estate and asset protection. I know when people call in there, that's one of the biggest questions that they have. What is a charging order? Tell us about that. Well, a charging order is a lien on distribution. So someone goes to court, gets a judgment against you, and they want to collect. If you hold real estate in your individual name, they could collect by forcing a sale of that real estate. If you hold the real estate in an LLC or LP, the procedure in some states for collecting is called the charging order, which just is a court order placing a lien on distributions. The person who has the judgment against you is charged, if you will, with receiving what you would get from the LLC or LP. Uh, Some states are weaker than others. Uh, California is notoriously weak. We like uh, Nevada and Wyoming for their protections. The exclusive remedy in those states and a couple other states is the charging or the lien on distribution. And as you mentioned at the top, Keith, this is a new area of law in the sense that LLCs have only been around since the 1980s, early 1990s, and courts are still fleshing out the rules. And we'll talk about a new Texas case where they're fleshing out that rule in Texas. But you have to keep on top of it. Like you said, it's a dynamic area of the law. New cases come into uh, play. Court and state legislatures change the rules. So you have to keep on top of it. But as a general principle, Nevada and Wyoming are two very good states for LLCs that offer the most asset protection. And you need asset protection because we live in a litigious society. People are suing each other all the time. And so it's very important as you start acquiring real estate, 
to start with asset protection right from the very beginning. Yeah, the best time to start is early. And well, because not all states offer equal investor protections, you know, sometimes you'll have someone that's a real estate investor in California or New Jersey or New York or a state where they don't have the best protections. And they're thinking, yeah, that sure would be great if I lived in Nevada or Wyoming. But you can go ahead and sort of borrow from their protections. Tell us about that. Well, what I like to do, Keith, for our clients is uh, say you have a property in New Jersey. You would have a New Jersey LLC. If a tenant sues you, that's the inside attack. They have a claim against the LLC itself, and that's going to apply whether it's a Nevada entity or a New Jersey entity. And the advantage, though, is by having the LLC, even in New Jersey or California, weak states, the tenant can't get beyond the LLC and get your personal assets. So we do have asset protection for the inside attack. The issue of Nevada and Wyoming comes with the outside attack. Someone sues you in a car wreck. It has nothing to do with the real estate you own. So we want to be able to have a very efficient block there so that someone suing you over a car wreck can't reach your real estate assets. By having that New Jersey or California LLC in turn owned by a Wyoming LLC, for example, in attack number two, the outside attack, the car wreck victim has to fight through Wyoming to even get at the California LLC. And so that's how we structure things. If you have property in California, we would use a California LLC, and then we would have that LLC owned by a Wyoming LLC. And, and we offer a free 15-minute consult. You can call the office and talk about your specific situation with one of our incorporating specialists. And and get a flavor of how you can best protect yourself. Okay, so in that example, it's sort of what I would call a two-tier structure, where Wyoming supersedes or is above the California LLC, and the Wyoming LLC sort of just acts as a holding company of the California LLC that's below it. So therefore, an attack would have to come through the Wyoming LLC before it could reach the California LLC. Exactly right, Keith. You've got it. All right, well, because asset protection is a more dynamic industry than most people think, you know, it's something where you don't just learn it and then know it and forget about it. You and I were chatting last week and you mentioned it again today. You let me know that Texas did have that court case that does limit their asset protection potentially now. So what happened to Texas charging orders? Well, in Texas, there was a case where a lady sued another individual. We'll call her Mary and him John. Mary sued John over the sale of a house. Mary won in court. Mary wanted to get at John's assets. Uh, John and his brother Bob owned a completely separate property in an LLC. And normally, Texas law would say that you would only get the charging order. Uh, Mary would only get what John would receive from the charging order. The problem was that John's brother tried to get cute. And uh, there's an old saying in the law that bad facts make bad law. And here we had bad facts. The brother tried to get rid of John's interest by some shenanigans, and the court was offended by that. And the court held, this is an appeals court in San Antonio, the court held, look, we can't allow these type of shenanigans here. We're going to place a hold on the sale of the asset itself. They kind of ignored the LLC charging order and placed a hold on the sale of the asset. And the chief justice, she was right on top of it. She dissented in the case and said, look, you don't have the ability to put a, a hold on the sale of the property. All you have is the right to the charging order. But we do have a case in Texas now that provides that the charging order is not the exclusive remedy. And what happens is you know, the Texas legislature could change this result if it wanted to. The Texas Supreme Court could. But when you have a case like this, Keith, it kind of becomes a virus because other courts could follow this misguided decision and say, yeah, when there are these types of elements involved, we are going to limit the transfer of the property. So until this virus is corrected, there is some uncertainty when using a Texas LLC, the charging order is no longer exclusive in Texas. So again, like we said, this is a changing area of the law. You have to keep up 
on these changes. And that's why we have a monthly newsletter that we send out to our clients and anybody can sign up for the newsletter where we identify what's happening within the, the law of LLCs and asset protection and, and keep you informed because we sent out our newsletter recently and a number of people have said, you're right, I need that Wyoming LLC now to hold the Texas LLC. That gives you the better protection. It's not expensive. Once it's set up, it's $50 to the state of Wyoming and 125 for us to be a resident agent in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Darn it. Um, <laughs> one of the prettiest places on earth. So, you know, you just have to keep up on what's happening in the asset protection arena because it is a dynamic area of the law. So in your experience, based on what you see with what has begun in Texas, could that potentially be a precedent that crosses state lines into other states and their interpretation? You know, that's always a, an, an issue, Keith. That's a good point. We do have the fact that Nevada and Wyoming have an economic incentive, along with Delaware, to have the best state laws. The states of Nevada, Delaware, and Wyoming generate a large amount of fees from the annual filing fees for these corporations and LLCs. So we like having states that have a stake in asset protection. And so I don't see that happening within the good states. But the single member LLC is not protected in California for various reasons, and other states have followed the California trend. So you're accurate that it, these types of decisions can be persuasive from one state to the next. Well, then how does one best protect Texas real estate today? Well, like our example, I would have certainly a Texas LLC uh, that'll protect you in attack number one. They won't be able to get at your personal assets. But then I would have the Texas LLC owned by a Wyoming LLC. And if someone sues you in the car wreck example, they have to fight through Wyoming to even get at the Texas LLC. That's where the protection comes. The case in Texas involved attack number two, the outside attack. And so we want to just put in that extra roadblock of Wyoming to protect Texas real estate investors. Okay, so it sounds like in Texas today, you'd still do just about the same thing you do if you own real estate in any other state. Correct. But it's important to know that Texas shouldn't be your ultimate holding entity now due to this case. Got it. That's a distinction. Okay. Well, let's just try to put ourselves in the shoes of the investor, Garrett. You know, I'm thinking about my listener that's interested in turnkey real estate investing. And I often talk about how it's best to probably hold turnkey real estate in three to five different metros. That's just my interpretation. Any fewer than that, you're not diversified very well. Any more than that, you kind of get bogged down in this administrative overburden. So to an investor that owns real estate in multiple states, you know, I want to ask, what might be the best way for that real estate investor to protect themselves without having too much administrative complication, but yet we don't want them to be underprotected either? And let's just say uh, this investor, Garrett, let's say they own 10 turnkey single family income properties, four of them in Dallas, three of them in Memphis, and three of them in Birmingham to make up their 10. What's potentially a good scenario and an asset protection layout for that investor? Well, you certainly could have a the Texas properties in a Texas LLC, uh, the Tennessee properties in a Tennessee LLC, and Alabama for the third LLC. Then if you wanted that extra layer of protection, you could have all those owned by a Wyoming LLC. That would be the best structure. Now, there's a little wrinkle with Tennessee, so <laughs> call the office for, for issues on Tennessee. You had to pick one state that had a wrinkle, Keith, but anyway... So we would structure it that way. Now, the issue becomes for Texas, would you have four properties in one Texas LLC or would you have two properties in two Texas LLCs? This is a judgment call. It's really up to your listener to decide what's best for them. One of the factors to consider is how much equity do you have in each property? Right. So, you know, say you've got $5,000 in equity in one and 10000 in the other. And, you know, these LLCs do require maintenance and, and tax returns. So, yeah, you could use one LLC for those two Texas properties. Well, would you put a million dollar single family home in the same LLC 
that holds a duplex that you rent out to the Hell's Angels. No, <laughs> I wouldn't do that because, you know, the Hell's Angels are going to sue and they're going to be able to reach the equity in the million dollar house. So we want to split up assets depending on the facts and circumstances of each case. And if one of your properties is rented to the Hells Angels, you might potentially have a problem with your property manager's leasing agent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You've got more issues than uh, just asset protection. Yeah, that's right. Well, I, I'm glad that you brought up the equity thing, Garrett, because you know I've talked on the show before about how having a low equity position is one. It's not certainly the whole picture, but it's just one potentially good asset protection strategy. Debt is a form of asset protection. And uh, so in loopholes of real estate, we talk about the strategy of equity stripping, where we pull the equity out of the property. So you lower the target, if you will, of your real estate, because there's no equity for someone to get at. But at the minimum, in that example I gave, where an investor owns four income single family homes in Dallas, three in Memphis, three in Birmingham, they would at least, and this is just at the minimum, want to have an LLC in Texas, an LLC in Tennessee, and an LLC in Alabama. And all three of those are owned by one Wyoming holding company or one Nevada holding company that sort of presides above it. Correct. That's the structure we set up for a lot of our clients. Most of our clients do that. Now, if you're starting out and uh, the extra LLC in Wyoming is an issue, and it's not very expensive to set these up and maintain them, but if you're starting out and you only can afford you know, three LLCs instead of four, I would have the three in each of the states where the property is located. Well, you recently wrote a new book. It's called Toxic Client. Boy, there's probably too many of those out there, but the name of the book is Toxic Client, Knowing and Avoiding Problem Customers. So, you know, how can we sort of be proactive and, and head this off in the first place? Is that why you wrote the book? I did, Keith. You know, in talking to the thousands of clients, I learned one of the reasons that they set up protective entities, LLCs and corporations is because they deal with these vexatious people, these toxic clients who can, you know, sue at the drop of a hat. And so in listening to my clients' stories, I thought, wow, this is this is a common problem that a lot of people have. And so I wrote a book based on the stories I've heard and and my own personal stories, because lawyers have their share of toxic clients too. You might not imagine that, but we do. So I wrote the book and uh, it's been well received and it's important for people, especially when you're starting out, to realize that not every client is a good client. The client is, in fact, not always right. And this applies to real estate. You have some tenants out there that are not good people. And you need to be able to identify these people and not work with them in the future if you're going to succeed. And so the book is really great for people starting out. But for people who've been in business a while, it confirms what they kind of knew, but never really had articulated. So for existing business owners, it's also valuable. It's kind of funny, Keith. I had one client who said, you know, instead of firing a client, I'm just going to give him this book. <laughs> <laughs> nice gift. I don't know how one would take that if they got that as a gift. <laughs> well, you're being fired. <laughs> yeah. The antioxidant to toxic clients there. Yeah. And Garrett, you have one interesting phrase in your new toxic client book. I don't know whether you coined it or not. It's just really interesting. Entitlementia. What is entitlementia? Well, I did coin it, Keith, and it, it refers to the people who have a sense of entitlement that is so profound that it's a form of dementia. So entitlementia is a combination of entitlement and dementia. And we're seeing more of these people in society who you know, would rather receive than achieve that expect privilege and reward without gratitude or effort. And those people are out there. You know, we identify them in the book and uh, we we have a website entitled com where people can share their stories of uh, the entitled toxic clients that they've run across. Yeah, that is definitely a bad word. There's too much of that out there. It's definitely antagonistic to what we talk about here on Get Rich Education, self-reliance and, and taking control of your own finances. No one else is going to do it for you. Exactly right. So the book Toxic Client deals with these issues. It deals with mental health issues, drug and alcohol issues. There are just some issues in society that make it tough on business owners, but our society needs business owners. We need people to invest in our country and start businesses. We need fewer impediments out there 
And so that's another reason I wrote the book. You know, I appreciate all the entrepreneurs out there that are trying every day to make things better, not only for themselves, but for their community. And so anything we can do to help identify problems and help entrepreneurs exceed, I'm all in favor of. Real estate and entrepreneurship are people businesses, and this can just help you understand other people for ways that might not be intuitive to you or, you know, you really want to understand how they tick. If you want to be a good investor, if you want to be a good negotiator, you want to understand what the other side wants, what their motivations are, or to be able to identify entitlement in somebody. Exactly right. Entitlement then leads back to asset protection. I mean, these, these people are used to taking and so we have to protect our entities because there are, are contingency fee attorneys that will help them in the taking, whether it's a real case or a frivolous case. And so, you know, society's set up that way. We're not going to change it anytime soon. So let's protect ourselves. And that's why we offer affordable asset protection. Yeah. Toxic client book subject matter, that's kind of the product of big picture thinking. And, you know, when I engage and I talk to Garrett, I prefer him because he practices big picture thinking. A lot of times, I think your local asset protection attorney, they might do a good job, but see, a lot of them, I think they get asset protection wrong. They're not thinking big picture. They're not thinking, go ahead and use your resident state or the state that your property resides in. Go ahead and use them as an LLC and you're good to go. And Garrett knows that that's really just one tier of a two-tier system. So I guess what I'm getting at, Garrett, is... What percent of attorneys do you think get asset protection wrong? Well, it's interesting, Keith. They don't teach asset protection in law school. So lawyers have to learn it themselves once they get out. And a lot of lawyers, you know, they specialize now, but a lot of them will focus in one area, family law, personal injury law, employment law. And, you know, very few focus on asset protection. A lot of them do it kind of as part of estate planning. But that you do have parochial attitudes where attorneys will say, well, Wyoming law wouldn't apply to us here in Alabama. And that's not the right answer. The right answer is that the United States allows each state to identify and put forth its own corporate and LLC law. And knowing that we have 50 different state laws, why not take advantage of the best state laws that are out there? So that's the big picture is certainly you're going to use an Alabama LLC for an Alabama property, but we want to use the big picture and protect the Alabama LLC from creditors and predators by using Wyoming or Nevada LLCs and entities. Yeah, I did not realize that they do not teach asset protection in law school typically. So when someone engages their local, what they think is their asset protection attorney, Well, that's kind of the difference between being certified and being qualified. That's what I'll call it. They might have the paper. They might have the credentials. They might even have some experience in setting you up, but are they truly qualified? Do they truly see the big picture? And I think the answer is often no. Right. I do find that, you know, there are plenty of good attorneys out there and you need a good real estate attorney in your state and they they may have a working knowledge of asset protection. But if they don't offer the big picture, the big protective structure like we've put in place for Robert Kiyosaki and others, you just need to reach out a little bit further and get that best protection. Yeah. And your services are actually quite affordable. You know, some listeners think, well, this is Garrett Sutton. He protects Robert Kiyosaki. I couldn't possibly afford this, but there's real value in what you do. And and first of all, tell us how you protected Robert Kiyosaki when he was somewhat famously sued several years ago. Well, Robert has always listened to his advisors. We have a great relationship (laughs) and, uh, Robert started becoming a bigger and bigger target, and so we needed to do more and more planning. But the the basic planning is Wyoming LLCs. And so without going into too much detail, the, the Wyoming LLCs have been very good protective entities for Robert and others. And like you say, this is not expensive to set these up. Yeah, you had the right firewalls in place there, so it limited what the litigant could go after there for Mr. Kiyosaki. Yeah, tell us just how affordable your fees are at Corporate Direct. Well, at Corporate Direct, we charge a flat fee of $695. That includes the filing of the articles of incorporation with the state, the preparation of the operating agreement, the minutes of the first meeting, the issuance of share certificates. You really need to have those. A lot of people think you don't, but when the IRS comes calling, 
they want to see those share certificates. And the resident agent fee is included in that 695. Now, if you mention get rich education, you get $100 off. So for $595, you get the entire package. You're ready to go. And then the state filing fees vary from state to state. So those are on top of the 595. Wyoming, for example, is $100 the first year. And then the annual renewal fee is $50. California is $800 per year. And so that's kind of a, a bit of heartburn for some people. But you still, it's another form of insurance. You have to look at these as mini insurance policies. I will always recommend that people have insurance on their real estate, an umbrella policy of insurance for their personal, you know, home and auto issues. But these LLCs are the second line of defense and consider them as insurance. But for $595 plus $100 in Wyoming, you're protected. And then in the second year, the price really drops. It's $50 to the state of Wyoming and then $125 for us to be the resident agent. So for $175 a year, you have really good asset protection via Wyoming LLC protection. Okay. So the ongoing expense annually after you're in for your second year would be the uh, $125 registered agent fee, just the $50 in Wyoming for the holding company. And then additionally, would it be the fees for the LLC in the state that you own the income property in? Correct. So for example, you have a, a California LLC, that would be the 800 a year. Other states or other states are much less than that. Wyoming's pretty inexpensive. The other states vary from 100 here to 200 there. But again, it's another form of insurance. So all in over the long term, one might only be in for two hundred or to three hundred dollars worth of fees for maintaining really the best known protection, at least in this second line of defense. Absolutely. These are not expensive. We make it very easy and affordable for people. That, that's kind of our goal is to provide affordable asset protection to real estate investors and entrepreneurs. You don't need to understand the arcania of corporate law. You just need to use corporate law to your advantage. Yeah, that sounds like a no-brainer. What's the best way for Get Rich Education to get a hold of you, Garrett? Well, they can call 800-600-1760. Uh, that's our 800 number, 800-600-1760. And, and mention Get Rich Education, and you'll get that $100 discount. You can call and talk to Cami or Lisa, get a 15-minute consult on what's best for you. So this is not expensive. We try and make it affordable for everyone. Garrett Sutton, thanks so much for coming back on to Get Rich Education. It's my pleasure, Keith. All right. Thanks to Garrett Sutton today, laying it out nice and simply for us. Next week, what makes more sense for you, renting the home that you live in or owning the home that you live in? You're going to get some insights on that trade-off that you've never thought of before. Your team can include Garrett Sutton's Corporate Direct, corporatedirect.com. All their info is in the show notes, of course. And uh, man, some choices are just easy. All week, I'm going to be thinking of the best ways that I know to help you build your wealth. Until then, go out there and don't quit your daydream. You've been listening to Get Rich Education, telling you what the wealthy won't tell you about real estate and investing. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively. Flow real estate investors nationwide and worldwide. This is Get Rich Education's Keith Weinhold. Forbes has rated Memphis, Tennessee as the number one cash flowing market in the world. 
Our good friends at Mid-South Homebuyers have been Memphis's premier turnkey real estate provider for 14 years with a stellar reputation and an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Owner Terry Kerr was born and raised in Memphis. Yeah, he knows the market and has renovated and sold over 1,000 houses in the Memphis area. Find out what their many repeat buyers already know. Their houses are completely renovated, even come with a one-year builder's warranty and a lifelong rental guarantee. They're a perfect fit for the first-time out-of-state investor or the seasoned investor diversifying their portfolio. Mid-South Homebuyers friendly staff makes investing easy. Learn more at midsouthhomebuyers.com or give them a call at 901-217-HOME. The preceding program was brought to you by your home for wealth building, getricheducation.com.